The more I look at what the Washington Supreme Court did in this County of Cowlitz decision involving Washington's ban on so-called large capacity magazines, the more offended I am. Specifically, I understand that technically speaking, a commissioner, that's right, a commissioner, a staff attorney, if you will, on behalf of the Washington Supreme Court, stayed the decision by Judge Gary Basher in a matter of approximately 88 minutes, according to reports. Now, this is totally offensive for a whole host of reasons I'm about to give you when we come right back. Because those of us who understand the relationship between commissioners, staff attorneys, and clerks and the justices or judges themselves will realize just how absurd, at least in my opinion, this decision by the commissioner really is. Let's break it down when we come back. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Boxes Diner, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and author of many best-selling books, including Disarmed, What the Ukraine War Teaches Americans About the Right to Bear Arms. Stay tuned. Big announcement. New book coming out very soon. Just finished the cover. All right, folks. So just to bring you up to speed, many of you already know this. And if you follow me on X at Four Boxes Diner, you've been tracking my coverage of this as well, as well as uh, Washington uh, gun law, of course, and others. Here's the issue. Yesterday, a very powerful 55-page decision. Now, this is important. What I just hear I just said, a 55-page decision that had considered nine declarations at a minimum from those supporting the state's position, the state of Washington's position, that they could constitutionally ban the sale of, the distribution of magazines that held more than 10 rounds, so-called large capacity magazines, which they're really, of course, magazines that hold more than 10 rounds are standard capacity, but set that issue aside. So the state of Washington had banned the distribution of sale of these magazines. There was a litigation, a particular litigation in front of Judge Gary Basher, a uh, state court trial judge in Cowlitz County, Washington. A 55-page decision was issued after a long period of review and analysis and writing by the trial judge, Judge Basher. According to reports, approximately 88 minutes later, meaning under two hours later, the Washington Attorney General had submitted an application to stay the effect of the ruling by Judge Basher and had been granted by a commissioner, a commissioner, you read just said, a commissioner of the Washington Supreme Court. Now, some people have taken me to task by, point, by saying that the Washington Supreme Court had issued the stay, and I stand by that statement, because you see the commissioner of the Washington Supreme Court is essentially an agent or representative of the judges on the Supreme Court. And one of the things that makes one, at least in my experience, a capable commissioner, magistrate, judge, uh, law clerk, law secretary, uh, whatever you want to call these staff attorneys for courts of appeals, for example, is they have a sense of what the judges who they work for would like to do in a particular case. So the fact is that the commissioner of the Washington Supreme Court stayed the decision by Judge Basher is really attributable entirely, in my view, to the Washington Supreme Court, because the commissioner, in this case, Michael Johnson, works for the Washington Supreme Court. And who runs the Washington Supreme Court? Well, obviously, it's the ju judges that sit on the Washington State Supreme Court. So yes, the Washington Supreme Court decided this through their agent, the commissioner. Now, here's what's offensive. Now, I want you to just think about this commonsensically for a moment. Now, it took me, who's familiar with the Second Amendment and high in litigation, the highest levels of society and highest levels of constitutional litigation, it took me just to review quickly, approximately 45 minutes or so, and I'm just skimming it, right? The 55-page decision by Judge Basher. And I didn't look at anything else. I just looked at the opinion. Now, let's just think about this for a moment. The commissioner stayed the decision by Judge Basher in approximately, at least according to the reports that I've read, in about 88 minutes between the time the decision is issued and the time the stay was entered. Now, if it takes Mark Smith 45 minutes or so to skim 
a 55 page decision that I don't actually have to legally act on, right? I'm not a lawyer or a judge. I don't have to actually get anything right. I'm just sort of reporting on it to you. How is it possible that a state law staff attorney equivalent commissioner, right, who is really a civil servant, as best I can tell out there in Washington. You guys in Washington will tell me if I got that wrong. But basically, a civil servant working for the Washington Supreme Court can read 55 pages carefully of Judge Basher's careful reasoning, can look at the underlying authority that Judge Basher relied on both factually and legally, such as like Reed Heller, Reed Bruin, Reed Catano, okay, and review the long submission by the attorneys for the state of Washington. So how is it possible for a commissioner, i.e. an equivalent of really a glorified staff attorney, to read all these materials and render a decision, including you know, drafting an order in 88 minutes? To me, I have two observations why it offends me. The first is that there's no way, in my opinion, you could give an honest, serious, comprehensive review of a complicated case. It's not that complicated at the end of the day, but complicated enough that gave rise to a 55-page opinion with all the supplemental materials and a major submission by the state of Washington with all the cases and authorities and footnotes that have to be reviewed to get it right, and write an order in 88 minutes. It's absurd to think that anybody, even Mark Smith, by the way, could pull that off and do it diligently and earnestly. I'm not saying you can't be sloppy and issue something out just off the top of your head. You can. But to get it right, to make sure that you're getting all the facts right, you got the authority right, you reviewed the cases upon what, right? To read all that and understand, not just read it, but understand it, put it together, think about it, to get to the right outcome, it's absurd, in my opinion, to think that any lawyer, maybe a Sam Alito or something like that, maybe, but even there, that's because they're familiar with the material. Like, I'm familiar with the cases. Like, I don't have to reread Heller McDonough Catano. I don't have to reread a lot of this stuff because I just know it. But I find it hard to believe, and maybe I'm wrong, but I find it hard to believe that a commissioner working for the Washington Supreme Court could read, digest, and understand how all this works together in the context of the Second Amendment generally and in the context of the specific facts of this case and get it all together to be able to stay a 55-page well-reasoned opinion in a matter of like an hour and a half. To me, it's absurd to think that that is possible. The only explanation that I would have, again, maybe I'm wrong, maybe the guy is as smart as artificial intelligence and can read this stuff super fast. He knows all this stuff. Maybe he's an expert in the Second Amendment and all that good stuff. I don't know, maybe he is. But to me, my speculation is that it would be very difficult to do a good comprehensive job. Now, this is not just, now here's that. So the first thing is the amount of time devoted to me makes me skeptical that this was well thought out, which tells me if I'm guessing what happened here, that the commissioner knew exactly what the city and Supreme Court justices of Washington want in a cases involving guns. And he just basically rubber stamped what he knew his bosses would want. Because he's like, hey, I know what they're going to do. They're going to uphold this law. I don't have to think about it because I know what my bosses want. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it because I know they're going to uphold the law because that's what they are in the Washington Supreme Court. They're a bunch of anti-gun liberals and they're going to do what I say. And therefore, in that case, the commissioner got it right because he's like, hey, I know my bosses hate guns. Um, I don't know if they do. I guess we'll find out. I'm guessing they do, but we'll see. And the commissioner just says, hey, I'm going to do what my bosses want because I have a sense of what they want and they're going to approve this. So I'm going to, I'm going to stay it. So that's the first thing that offends me. I seriously doubt that this was taken seriously. And the only excuse for this, in my opinion, is that the commissioner knows that his bosses hate guns and hate the Second Amendment are never going to allow this decision to stand. Now, beyond that, Here's the other thing that's offensive, and this is getting inside baseball geeky. Now, courts of appeals in the federal system, for example, have staff attorneys that work for them. They have law clerks. There's different types of law clerks. I'm not going to bore you with the details here. Um, but the law clerks I'm talking about are the ones that deal with, um, I don't want to be offensive here, 
but they really deal with the routine cases that should not really be decided by prominent federal judges. And what I mean by that is that just understand that every case that's pending is important is important to the parties involved, but not every case is precedential and necessarily requires a robust um, analysis because they're routine. Now, this case involving the state of Washington for Gator custom guns is not routine. It involves a fundamental, fundamental constitutional right that has been spoken to by the U.S. Supreme Court. The routine cases that I am talking about where you might use a commissioner or a staff attorney or a law clerk for a court system to deal with are kinds of cases that we see in the system by, for example, pro se plaintiffs that don't know what they're doing have filed nonsense and that can often be dealt with without initially a judge. Prisoners are very known, prisoners in prison are known for filing lawsuits on frivolous grounds. And that's what we're talking about here. Usually you use these kind of staff attorney commissioner types to weed out the dross, meaning you kind of, you know, again, pro se prisoner cases, uh, frivolous kind of cases that are obviously being brought by someone that doesn't know what they're doing. They're not being represented by lawyers. Those are the kinds of things that people like commissioners, in my experience at least, are supposed to be resolving. What they're not supposed to be doing, and it's shocking that the commissioner felt that, and maybe he, he presumably has the authority to do it, but if I were the commissioner on a major constitutional matter that came before me, I would have exercised my discretion, unless I was told not to previously by the court, I would have exercised my discretion and I would have called up the judges and said, look, I'm the commissioner here. This is a 55-page decision involving a fundamental constitutional right as set forth by the United States Supreme Court in multiple cases. This is a high-profile matter, a serious opinion involving the constitutionality of the state of Washington's law involving magazines. This is a big deal. If I were the commissioner, I would have exercised judgment and contacted my bosses, the judges, and say, look, yeah, I legally can decide this, whether or not a stay should be issued stopping this lower court ruling in favor of the Second Amendment and the, mag and the plaintiffs, uh, meaning Gator Guns, but I think you judges need to look at this because this is a big deal. It's not a pro se plaintiff. It's not a prisoner that can't read or write English submitting some crappy document that I can dispose of as a commissioner. No, this is a big deal. And again, if I were the commissioner, I would have exercised my professional judgment and discretion and be like, yeah, I legally can do this, but it's not right. Not on this kind of, not in the nature of this case, the nature of this decision and what's going on here, I would have said, you guys should decide this case. Now, one wonders whether or not the commissioner actually made that phone call to the judges, and I don't know, but I could see the commissioner called up the Supreme Court of Washington judges and say, hey, got this big deal here. Do you want me to resolve it, or do you guys want to handle it? And maybe the judges said to him, you handle it, because you know what we want. We're not going to uphold this thing. We're going to strike it down, so just, or, or we're not going to uphold uh, Judge Batcher's ruling. We're just going to like allow the gun control law to stand, because we're the Washington Supreme Court, we're in Washington, we're beholden to, you know, we are buddy buddies with the Attorney General and so on. By the way, as a side note, I should note that the commissioner, according to what I've read, is Michael E. Johnson. He was appointed by the Washington Supreme Court, by the justices of the court. And what's interesting, though, is that I looked at, according to, according to what I've read here on the Washington Court's directory, uh, he previously worked, ready for this, for the Washington Attorney General's Office. The Washington Attorney General's Office. And who does Bob Ferguson, the Attorney General, uh, who submitted the papers in this case? Well, he, he's the Attorney General. And again, I'm not saying that Michael Johnson here is going to be biased uh, in favor of the Washington Attorney General's office, but I think it's probably a good fact if you're Bob Ferguson and the Attorney General of Washington that you're seeking a stay from someone that used to work in your office. I don't see how that's possibly a bad thing. If anything, that's a good thing. Uh, nevertheless, uh, that is why I'm particularly offended by the fact that a commissioner decided to stay the decision uh, out of Cowlitz County by Judge Gary Basher. And again, I'm not saying that anybody acted unethically or illegally here. What I'm saying is that the quality of this process is not at the level that I think it probably should have been given the nature of this case and the quality of the work down below. 
it should have required more than 88 minutes to have analyzed this carefully and to decide whether or not to stay it or not. And I think the decision should have been signed by one of the one or more of the justices on the Washington Supreme Court and not a commissioner, just from the appearance of optics, if you were or the optics. Because keep in mind, as I always explain on Fox News, there's two parts of the justice system that have to be done right. One is the process itself has to actually be fair to the parties. And the other thing is the process has to appear fair to the public so that we, the public, trust the process and respect the decisions of these courts, even if we disagree with them. And that is where I think a lot of these people are falling down in the Trump cases, by the way, as well as in the context of uh, you know Washington versus Gators uh, custom guns. Because in my view, the appearance of what happened here does not look good. And appearances are very important when you're dealing with our justice system because if people don't perceive fairness, if they don't perceive justice as occurring, then it causes them to lose respect for the system and thus, by extension, lose respect for the rule of law, which is a huge competitive advantage for we have as Americans. And of course, it's very important to be governed by the rule of law and not the rule of men, as our founding fathers understood, which is why they wrote down the Constitution and the Second Amendment. All right, so there you have it. A uh, quick update here out of Cowlitz County in Washington State. Uh, let's see what happens uh, before the Washington Supreme Court. Next steps. Don't forget to follow me on X at Four Boxes Diner. And don't forget to subscribe and resubscribe here. We're trying to get to 150,000 subscribers fast. And we'll see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up. Table 2A.